Okay, this explanation is possibly going to sound more complicated than it is. It's a very straightforward matter. We'll begin with what we know as a certainty. We know as a certainty that rockfall on the accident day passed this way because that rock that I was, I was standing on we know is directly underneath here and we know that rock, rockfall was diverted to the right of that and we know that porters witnessed rockfall coming past there was plenty of evidence there is a canvas kit bag that has been destroyed there there are some clothes um, that we found with princess written on them we know for a certainty and nobody is disputing this that rockfall passed this way okay so we know that the rockfall must have followed this re-entrant here okay now we also know for a certainty that the clients were killed there at 5,245 metres. Arguably, um, the fatal wounds occurred up to 15 metres higher, but um, we found evidence of a collision at 5,245 metres, which is directly beneath this very evident residual glacial deposit, which has accumulated at the base of that R-shaped glacier. Now we can see the descending part of the glacier there, just slightly to the left of where Fred is. And the right-hand part of it we cannot see because this accumulation of rock is actually sticking proud of the glacier. So whereas in theory we should see it if, if we were looking directly up a smooth slope, because there is a lump of um, rock that has accumulated at the base of that, we can't see it. Now, everyone knows that Poptolo you reach if you continue from the base of the stone train in that direction, the line it takes. So Poptolo is there. Okay, and to the left of that, you have another stone tower, a small one. Now, between Poptolo and this small stone tower, you have a re-entrant, which converges with this re-entrant. Now, to the left of that, you have another stone tower, so, of course, there's a re-entrant to the right of this stone tower and a re-entrant to the left of it. Now, to the left of that re-entrant, you have this stone tower, which stands above the right hand and left hand arms of this glacier here. Now, the people were killed here. So, what some characters are trying to persuade us to believe is that rockfall from Poptolo fell from there and somehow it didn't just come around the stone train, but it moved about 350 metres to the left, crossed two major re-entrants and one very small one, and then came down this way, which is completely against the normal course of physics as most people would understand it. Far simpler is to believe that when these 170 to 180 kilometer hour winds occurred following a very dry season where the ice that was bonding these uh, residual um, uh, glacial de deposits that are formed at the uh, base of the right hand arm of this uh, glacier here, when that ice had melted because there wasn't much runoff from the glacier because it had receded seasonally, there was nothing holding it together, and so these very strong winds simply toppled um, the tip of this mound, and it came crashing down above where Fred is. Some came down this way, and um, most of it came to rest shortly above where Fred is. Now, where, from where Fred is, he's going to traverse directly across to the right, almost downhill. It's going to be very fast to cross that dangerous re-entrant. You'll notice from the first report that we did that this re-entrant here is the point at which risk zone A and risk zone B converge. So it's, it's quite a dangerous one. The only reason we are proposing that moving across it is safe is because now we think we can cross it in about three minutes as opposed to moving up this way and across this way and taking about 55 minutes and being in two risk zones. I'll go there now and we'll do it.